I'm really excited about this next story and seeing the cracks in the dam. This is from CapitolHillSeattle.com. Community news for all the hill. Capitol Hill Seattle blog. Welcome to free Capitol Hill. Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone forms around emptied East Precinct. With updates. And now, I mean, this is a really complex headline, right? This is, you go, wait, 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 what just happened? So, like, I actually, let, let, let's skip ahead for a second to the next link, which is wikipedia.org article on the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone. Now, I got to point out, as you, as you can see here on on this graphic, there's, there's this red uh, highlighted part right there at the top that says this article is being considered for deletion in accordance with Wikipedia's deletion policy. Please share your thoughts. Feel free to improve. Um, you know, I, I hope they don't delete this because this is so cool, but it's, this is worth pointing out. And then you see in the, the little blue area next to that on the Wikipedia page underneath it, this article documents a current event. Information may change rapidly as the event progresses and initial news reports may be unreliable. The latest latest updates of this article may not reflect, blah, blah, blah. Now, scrolling down, this is this is really cool. Now you're going to start, start to see what this is. Why are they calling it an event, not a thing? They made a thing. They made a thing. This is an event that is ongoing. But what they did is they made the event a thing that is not an event, creating this autonomous zone. And you know, whoa, 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 like it, I know, bear with me. It took me a while reading these stories just to understand what's happening. So the first part from the Wikipedia page, the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone, C-H-A-Z, or the zone. I love that Chaz. It's got a nice little personality-filled acronym there. Also known as Free Capitol Hill is a self-declared intentional community and commune of around 200 residents covering about six city blocks in the Capitol Hill neighborhood of Seattle, Washington. The zone was established on June 8, 2020, after the East Precinct was abandoned by the Seattle Police Department. That's two days ago. The founding of a new political entity out of these protests and riots. What a beautiful thing, right? A lot, all in line with what I've always been talking about in localization, declaring sovereignty, micronations, just opting out of bigger political systems and we don't want to be a part of this. So in the Wikipedia page, they've got the, the, the background, which is so important. Capitol Hill is a district in downtown Seattle known for its prominent LGBT and counterculture communities. The district had previously been a center for other mass protests, such as the 1999 Seattle WTO protest. On May 29, 2020, protests began in Seattle following the murder of George Floyd. After days of protests commemorating George Floyd and condemning police brutality outside of the Seattle Police Department's East Precinct, Mayor Jenny Durkin announced a series of de-escalate interactions, which limited police presence in the Capitol Hill neighborhood following a Police retreat, citizens erected street barricades and declared the anarchist Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone. If you could pull up the picture there, bottom uh, or to the right on the Wikipedia page, you can actually see it says the zone on June 9, 2020, where they actually have the barricades up. Now, obviously, this is not a fully well thought out so much as a spontaneous creation no less legitimate for being that way of course if a group of people or an individual says i'm opting out and we own this property i don't want to be a part of your system anymore they absolutely have the right to declare their independence that's how america got here after all so what is this territory the zone is concentrated around the East Precinct building. It stretches north to East Olive Street, east to 13th Avenue, south to East Pike, and west 
to Nagel Place. The southern half of Cal Anderson Park falls inside the zone, while the northern half is contested. Maps of the territory were displayed on OpenStreetMap and Wikipedia. Protesters concerned about, concerned about the potential for another vehicle attack use blockades and fences to construct staggered barricades at intersections. The entrance of the zone's territory is marked by a barrier reading, You are entering Free Capitol Hill. In homage to Northern Ireland's Free Dairy, other signs declared, You are now leaving the USA. Now, to what degree in the middle of a city will they be able to maintain their autonomy? There are actually a number of such areas where there are relative autonomous zones already throughout the world. And the bottom of this article list, for example, Freetown Christiana, which is an intentional community in the Danish capital city of Copenhagen. There is a list of anarchist communities that to different degrees assert their sovereignty. And here in the middle of a city, are they able to separate from foreign aid for basic utilities or infrastructure? Probably not. But this is a beautiful thing to say we don't have to respect the very foundation of your authority. We are going to opt out and create our own thing. So back to CapitolHillSeattle.com, the Capitol Hill Seattle blog. The first night in the so-called Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone that is formed in the wake of police giving up the week-long blockade of the East Precinct was rainy and peaceful and full of speeches from activists, agitators, poets, and socialist city council members. I guess whatever the fuck we're doing is effective, one organizer identified as Matt. YouTube, you can't censor me from that. That's a quote from the news. Said over a megaphone earlier, early in the night as police were still clearing the area. Quote, they are going to move up. They are going to get everybody out of here, and we are free to move through these streets and protest and march. Yesterday, we were on 11th and Pine. The day we have victory on 12th and Pine, they tried to stop us. The night brought tense moments, but compared to the previous week of blast balls and clouds of gas and pepper spray, Pike Pine was calm, if not quiet. The county sheriff's helicopter stayed circling overhead until midnight, providing observations to SPD command on the ground and often drowning out speeches below. The only mate, so government backed off. And things got more peaceful. And the only thing that was still annoyingly not peaceful was the government helicopter overhead, uh, obnoxiously surveilling. If you can surveil with a quiet drone, why send up a helicopter? Like, just, and again, it's just one of these things that you go, freaking government, really? I mean, why? Like, I mean, Jim has an $800 drone that he used to like provide amazing footage of the protests in Phoenix when he went down there last week, week before Jesus. Been a while. Yeah. Wow. Time flies when you're having fun out here at the garden, but why, why do something that's more expensive, more dangerous requires more manpower? Well, for all of those reasons, they want things to be more expensive, more dangerous and require more manpower because it justifies their budgets, their power, their control. And it kind of lets you guys know in the chaz, Big Brother is still watching you. Or as Jim might refer to him, the punk little brother, right? Uh, the only major reported conflict came when a TV news crew for the local Fox affiliate was temporary, temporarily chased from the scene and took a refuge in the nearby fire station. The surprise pullback of SPD riot police National Guard troops came together quickly Monday afternoon after a day of hastily clearing out equipment, moving trucks, and reports of a mobile shredding unit at the building at 12th and Pine that is home to the East Precinct headquarters as well as department office facilities. Quote, the decision has been made to allow demonstrators to march past the East Precinct later today. An announcement sent to department staff about the decision 
to close the building red. Additional measures are currently underway to enhance our ongoing efforts to ensure the security of our East Precinct and provide for the safety of all our officers. So there was a withdrawal of the increased presence, a withdrawal from one building, and the people they're protesting said, all right, screw it. We're going to be sovereign and autonomous now. Amazing. I love it. And I, you know, I wonder if this is going to become a sustainable pocket of autonomy. Obviously, the police aren't leaving them alone. It's not like out here we can we can say this is this is my. I didn't mean to point to that. I mean out here, out here at the Garden of Freedom, like we can point to like Adam owns this land and is his property. Law enforcement is not welcome here. You're gonna have to force your way in, right? Can you really do that with a, a big chunk of downtown Seattle and expect that? SPD is going to leave you alone or that the county isn't going to keep flying helicopters and say, no, you're not really autonomous. But if you say, well, screw the city, screw the county, screw the state, screw the federal government, we're declaring ourselves autonomous. To what extent it will be respected, we don't know, but we will demand that it be respected. We'll keep our expectations low, perhaps. I wonder if this is sustainable, right? Because obviously this is being driven by a lot of energy around the protest. This is being driven by the immediate circumstances with coronaphobia, with George Floyd and riots and protests all over America. Is there a sustainable community here? Is there a pocket uh, of people who really want to maintain this border? and assert it to differentiate themselves from the rest of the corrupt governing structures in the United States. I don't know. I hope so. The pullback and boarding up of the precinct follows a Sunday night conflagration described by many as the most aggressive show of crowd control power, firepower, yet by SPD that came only hours after Mayor Jenny Durkin, after a Mayor Jenny Durkin speech on de-escalation. Monday night, Durkin remained silent on the development of the precinct until late into the night. At 11.20 p.m., some seven hours after Chief Carmen Best held a hastily arranged press briefing outside the facility, the mayor tweeted that the retreat is an effort to proactively de-escalate interactions between protesters and law enforcement outside the East Precinct. Yes! Yes! This is what we need! proactive de-escalation fire the cops before they can escalate anything yeah uh defund the police sounds like proactive de-escalation to me keeping demonstrations durgan said keeping demonstrations peaceful must be a joint effort between our community members and law enforcement i am hopeful that tonight with these operational changes our city can peacefully move forward together now, this is see, this is why I really hate the property destruction being mixed with protests. If you're gonna do righteous property destruction, like do it covertly, you know, do it monkey wrench gang style. Don't go out and like if you go next to a loud protest and a bunch of cops to start throwing like you're asking to get arrested. You're not doing it as thoughtful pro you know, property destruction and, and encouraging violence and conflict with police is never helpful. So why would, would you, you know, think that with it, without that, clearly police are the aggravators here. And even with that, the amount of violence that we've seen in protests has been more caused by police than rioters on the whole. Certainly the violence towards people. Maybe you want to say not to property, but we've seen videos of police destroying shit too. Slashing car tires, busting out windows. So, again, you know, you get government out of it, things get more peaceful. So, the Seattle Department of Neighborhoods, meanwhile, sent an ominous-sounding message to area businesses and organizations that warns of a credible threat to burn the precinct building down, notifying them that the building and nearby apartment buildings were to be assessed for possible treatment by, with a biodegradable foam fire suppressant by the Seattle Fire Department as a preventative measure. So Tuesday morning, the first morning brought a new configuration to the streets. The police barricades and walls left behind to provide protesters the resources they need 
to create their own path through the neighborhood barriers have been dragged into a zigzag maze to block traffic from passing. So they created a barricade system to limit or eliminate uh, vehicle traffic. That's kind of a cool premise for an inner city autonomous zone. It's a vehicle free area or motor vehicle free area. Tent shelters have been put up to help keep volunteers dry at the edges of the core around 12th and Pine. I guess it's like, you know, you put enough people out of work. What are they gonna, they might just organize against you, create their own communities. Above the walled off entrance to the building of the police department for the third precinct, the sign has been spray painted to now read Seattle People Department East Precinct. I love it. I love it. So where does this go? Politics, not umbrellas. Instead of umbrellas, water bottles and rocks, Durkin and SPD officials instead are now facing political threats. Quote from District 3 representative and longtime Durkin critic Shama Sawant uh, in her time at the microphone at Monday night's rally said, what we are seeing now is an uprising, a rebellion of young people, not just nationwide, but globally. Two years ago, there was a police contract up for the vote. It was a bad contract. It was a racist contract. It was going to roll back the limited accountability measures that were hard fought for by community members. And the community spoke with one voice and pleaded, pleaded with Mayor Durkham and the city council, please vote now. What do you think happened? I was the only no vote on that contract. We have to remember that what built the movement is not people who are in power that may look like you or me, but it is people who have shown through their actions that they are in solidarity with ordinary people in marginalized communities. Now, while obviously there is a trend towards a certain kind of leftism here of anarcho-socialism, anarcho-communism, perhaps among a lot of these communities, you have to accept that some of them are doing so under the umbrella of voluntarism, and perhaps of their own concept of how they would untangle the knot of unjustly acquired property that we live in today. But these are people who would, you would certainly want to include in the bottom unity concept of voluntarism and say, look, if they're saying we're not going to force our concept of socialism or communities on anybody else, we just want to encourage people to opt out community-wise. These are the best kind of allies that, that we could have as libertarians, even though they are in many ways distinctly leftist. If they adhere to the same you know, ethical premise of voluntarism that, that uh, is behind libertarianism, then it is absolutely essential that, that we, you know, actively support this because what they are doing is asserting their sovereignty for whatever system that they want. And I'm reminded of a couple of quotes. First, MLK, who said something to the effect of an injustice anywhere is an injustice everywhere. And while there's not in, in the sense a literal truth to that, there really is literal truth to the idea that if you commit a crime against someone and you're a stranger to me and the other person's a stranger to me and your quality of life is reduced or theirs is because they're the victim of a crime. And as two people on the other side of the planet, perhaps your productivity is reduced because you resorted to unethical behavior instead of cooperative behavior. I'm a victim too, not directly, not in an ethical sense, but in, in, in the abstract sense, I'm a victim in that I live in a less vibrant world as a result. I live in a world where, you know, my ability to trade as a capitalist and engage with people over the rest of the country and the rest of the world is, is now reduced in quality. We all suffer. We all live in a less vibrant world because of institutionalized unethical behavior most commonly manifest through governments around the world. And I'm also reminded of the famous Pastor Niemöller poem, right? World War II, you know, first they came for the socialists and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the communists and I did not speak. Then they came for the Jews and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. And then 
when they came for me, there was no one left to speak. Well, for everybody who is speaking for their own sovereignty, I hope we can hang together so that we don't hang separately. And when the rest of us see the opportunity to create our own autonomous zones, that we are standing together and supporting each other, regardless of what the flavor of that new voluntary, intentional, autonomous, sovereign unit might just happen to be. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.